Ladies and gentlemen, this is Internet Personality Evangelist here with a Common Rider toy review. This is Motion Revive Series 6. It's an interesting little set of blind-packed Common Rider toys that have been around for about a year and a half or so, I think, at this point. Uh, there's only six series out. This is the newest one, and this is also the one to uh, cause great uproar and change to the status quo by uh, reducing the number of unique figures to six, but upping the paint apps. So I thought this would be a good one to cover first, also because it's the easiest one to get a hold of right now. These guys are a uh, pretty interesting scale. They're just about, actually, the scale of another toy line you may recognize. G.I. Joe. For those of you who don't have G.I. Joes, uh, they also look pretty cool with Universe Ravage. And uh, look suitably dwarfed by small transformers such as the Warrior. Now, they're very cool figures, and there's a lot to cover, so I'm going to uh, start off on one of them, uh, the one that pretty much can also display to you all the unique and neat aspects of the Motion Revive series. Let's go! This is Kamen Rider Kuga in his rising mighty form. You know, uh, in retrospect, that segue could have uh, used some pun on no fear, no pain, but uh, my bad. So the interesting choice here is that, uh, as you can see by the golden trim and the uh, golden leg brace, this is not just mighty form Kuga, this is rising mighty, which is an interesting choice for uh, the Emotion Revive series, because the... Uh, SH Fig Arts Kuga figures that are on the way are not rising, they're just normal base forms. Now the detail on these guys is something that's pretty impressive, especially considering they retail for really, really cheap in Japan. Um, they're really expensive on the aftermarket, unfortunately, but in Japan itself, uh, these guys are literally like five to six bucks, I think. Last I checked, it might be different now. This guy's got some pretty decent posability, and he's also got the least limitations of uh, the bunch that I've got here, so... This gives you a pretty good demo of everything. There's 24 advertised points of articulation. You've got balls everywhere. you got double-jointed uh, elbows and knees, ankles. There's a torso joint. It's all ball joints. As you can see, the torso is just uh, a ball connected in the uh, mid-chest area. Ball-jointed neck. This is actually really good on a lot of them. What you looking at? I'm a Kuga! There's a very few figures where the neck articulation is hindered, which is really impressive given that the ball is set that deep. Uh, really, it's just Gatak, whose head is almost immobile. There's also really, really nicely done shoulder, where it's actually a double ball. There's a huge ball socket joint connecting it to the chest, and a little ball socket joint connecting the arm. So, posability-wise, these guys, with all this stuff they can do, they really beat out almost all the other toys on the 3 3 quarter inch scale, and for their price, they definitely beat them out. Um... They also tend to come with uh, weapons, which up until now were pretty much unpainted. Now that they are painted, it's nice, but they have one problem that I'll show you when I get to one of them. Um, also, a lot of them come with alternate hands, which are really easy to swap on and off. Kuga, in this case, comes with the normal grippy hands and karate chop hands, or henshin hands. So, uh, it's really nice to see them returning to these older figures, albeit because of Decade. But I hope that Motion Revive continues, because this is such a cool scale to have these guys on. I mean, you can you can have Kuga minding his own business, and then Cobra Commander shows up with a gun! And Cobra Commander has apparently grown massive balls, so Kuga's just like, RIDER KICK! And then he notices Cobra Commander has a gun, so he takes it from him. And then he goes like, I can use guns too. And... Cho Henshin into Common Rider Kuga, rising Pegasus form. Now this is where we can uh, cover the accessories. Now this accessory is painted gold, and that's a big plus over all the older accessories, which typically were just solid black plastic. However, it still has one problem, that being it's incredibly bendy. And if you get one that was in the package in a bit of a funny way, have fun unbending that. Yeah, that's something to look out for, especially on swords. And, um, well, you know, speaking of swords... UNDERGUNTAISKA! <laughs> None of you are gonna get that joke. That is like... That joke is like five or six years old at this point. I can't count. Anyway, this is Kamen Rider Blade from the 2004 Kamen Rider series, Kamen Rider Blade. He's a really great balance, actually, of paint apps and accessories, and just check out some of the detail on this guy. Bear in mind how small he is. Uh, it really is impressive. Also, 
he comes with a really interesting uh, accessory. He comes with the Blay Rouser, and uh, it comes with a holster. You can pull it out, put it in his hand. Unfortunately, it's only painted silver. It doesn't have any additional details, but they're all sculpted there, so you can kind of see. So, um, you can paint them in yourself if you really want to. That's something that really helps these guys out, which I'm going to be doing eventually. Um, his other cool thing, though, is he comes with uh, a thing to replicate the Blay Rouser's little card holder, which is this uh, red piece of plastic. Unfortunately, it's solid red, and when you stick it on, it's, you know, it's not that convincing, but it's still pretty cool. I think it's a nice touch. Uh, Blade himself is very silver, and uh, it, it really is nice. He's shiny, he's got detail all over the place, and uh, one really neat thing about these figures, and something that kind of is a common Rider thing, it's a marketing thing, is that due to similar suit designs, a lot of these guys pretty much can be made by building themselves off of another one. Like, this guy, basically, his legs are on all the common Riders from this series, and the armor is, is very easy to re-sculpt, the arms are pretty much the same, so... Uh, I'm very sure we're going to see some more Blade characters. I gotta say again, the posability on these guys is fantastic. Uh, they, these are some of the best toys you can get if you're a Kamen Rider fan. I just wish they were easier to get a hold of. Overall, very impressive little guys. Let's cover what a lot of people wanted to see. The final forms from Kamen Rider Kiva. This is Ixa Rising. This is the uh, third Ixa suit, actually. Uh, the first two were basically identical, but this was the big upgrade where he simultaneously did a Fize routine combined with a Kabuto cast-off combined with a uh, Deno transforming faceplate, which I thought was kind of funny at first, but I've kind of grown to like this design. It's got a cool Metal Hero thing, and uh, there's two paint colors on his sword, which means he got a lot of love. And he's got paint on his other weapon, his little uh, cell phone gun. Now, this toy is, this This is one of the better figures, I think, just because, um, I, I'm guessing because he's from the series that was current when this came out, he got a lot more detail. He does use a lot of reused parts. By the way, he's even got the little fessels uh, on the side here. Uh, you can pull those off. This is the Ixa toy from an earlier wave. As you can see, their weapons are identical, their legs are identical, their belts are identical, and their arms are basically identical. A um, lot of shared parts just painted differently. The thing is, this is a fact of the show. This is what they do to, to get more suits on the show, get more toy uh, potentials out of the show, and it works well for Motion Revive because it means that we get to have a, basically a great chance of seeing almost all the rider suits from the newer shows uh, if the line continues. A lot of people are into Ixa, and uh, this is more or less the only way you're gonna get a nice quality, poseable Ixa figure. Uh, it's a shame because yeah, these this design I think deserves to have something with you know metal in it or at least bigger than five inches. But uh, all the same, it's uh, it's a great thing for Kiva fans or at least Ixa fans. And there is one other uh, Kiva toy in this set. Kiva Emperor, another toy that very likely will get screwed over for future releases, as far as I can tell. Kiva Emperor is the centerpiece of Series 6 of the Motion Revive Kamen Riders. Uh, he's designed to be it, because this was the final form of the main rider of the year these came out. Uh, he has the most pieces, the most paint apps, the biggest accessory. He is loaded. This guy is the bang-for-your-buck figure from this set. Uh, just get a look at the facial detail on this guy, too. Check out just all the like the little green jewel, the silver trim. It's very nicely done, especially considering that this is a blind packed figure that is not retailing in Japan for more than like five bucks or ten bucks, I guess, if you try to buy them single. It's really impressive, and also he has uh, ball joints on his cape. Now this actually didn't turn out all that well because the idea is this lets you have a posable double-tailed cape. The problem is the balls barely actually go in the sockets and more often than not these things will just fall out, uh, which is a shame. But I, I do like that they built up all this, you know, the bulky armor up here. Uh, he also is the uh, the only other figure in this set to come with multiple hands. I, I have uh, both types on. He's got the normal gripping hand and the Kiva funky kung fu pose and you can... Uh, you can put, you know, both grippy hands or both funky kung fu pose hands on him if you want. And he comes with the Fap Sword. And uh, you can actually move the, uh... Yeah. I'm gonna beat you so hard, Fangire! <laughs> and another thing you can do with this, aside from knock his hand off, is you can pull the little bat off and you get the original version of the King's Sword. 
uh, when it made Wataru all evil and grumpy for like a half an episode. Eh, yeah. And he comes with uh, Tatsulot sculpted on there. Solid gold, same with Kivat. But it's uh, not bad. I mean, those are little paint details you can add yourself if you really want them. I don't really care. And uh, this is another bang for your buck figure, as I said. Just like Rising Ixa, um, this guy looks like you're getting something really awesome. Not to say Blade and Kuga don't look it. It's just that they, I think they made Rising Ixa and Emperor Kiva out to be just really nice centerpieces. If you're a Kiva fan, these are a must. If you're not a Kiva fan, you may want to skip them. Although, I'm not a huge Kiva fan and I still enjoy these suits. And just as standalone toys, they look really cool. There is one other toy in this set, though. The one who lost his love, his organization, and his friends. The manliest rider of Blade. It's common rider, Garen. For some reason, he keeps looking away from the camera. I don't understand what... Oh my god! Yes, they released Garen, but they only released him like this. A variant based on the second to last episode of Blade that he appeared in. This is uh, Garen after the... Diamond King Undead beat the crap out of his face and pretty much beat half of his helmet off with the butt of his sword. It's a really cool sculpt, actually, and I'm really surprised how much of a likeness there is there to uh, Tachibana. And I like the little details, like the headband and everything. The only problem I have with this is that this is all you get! <laughs> You don't get a nice, proper, unbusted helmet. This was the secret figure of the wave, and it was nice that the secret figure was entirely new, aside from being, you know, the blade repaint parts, like the arms and the legs. But, <laughs> a bit of a cop-out, and as far as I know, they haven't announced a Garen whose helmet is in one piece, which is a real shame, because I like this. I would have liked it if this was an accessory, but as the only head, it's a bit of a downer, which is my big knock against the set, which sucks, because this is otherwise a really solid Garen figure. His gun, you know, it has a holster that works. Uh, you get another one of those doofy uh, red pieces of plastic to put on it that looks like cards. The only problem is that he can't hold it that tightly with the uh, typical Motion Revive grippy hand, and this red piece does not clip on here that solidly. Uh, it'll fall out of his hand, you'll get it on there, you're like, okay, that's cool, it's on, put it in his hand. Alright, let's pose him! Uh, oh, no, hold on to it, Garen! Oh, and now your cards fell out. Yeah, that's <laughs> the gist of it, which is a bit of a shame. But, uh, it's still a really cool figure, and it's a great idea for a bit of fan wank to those of us who love Blade, which is uh, still one of my favorite uh, Heisei Rider series. I wish he had a full mask head to put on there. Only big shame about this guy, so uh, gotta give him a knock against, and hopefully we'll see a proper one in the next series. Anyway, overall, the Motion Revive Kamen Riders are some of the best Kamen Rider figures you can get. The combination of size, price, quantity, quality really comes together nicely. The only downsides are the bendy weapons, and sometimes the joints can get a little bit loose over time, but it's nothing major. Uh, there are, of course, the freak cases of QC, like uh, one that I have of one of my Ixas, which you'll see later on. Which brings me to my next point. I'd like to review all of these. Now, there are five more sets of them. Do you guys want me to review them by set? Or do you want me to review them by series? Like, do you want to see set one, set two, through five? Or do you want to see all the Kabuto ones, all the Hibiki ones, all the Deno ones, etc.? Let me know in the comments, and I'll figure out what I want to do. In the meantime, I do recommend these a lot. This series you can still get from HLJ or 1999, I think, unless they've sold out. Check eBay, too. eBay sometimes has these guys on auction. I also hope that the Motion Revive series continues on, because it has a lot of potential, and thanks to these Blade and Kuga figures getting made, a lot of that potential is really starting to get me amped up, and I hope it doesn't die off while it's still ahead, because... With Decade around, they have a great excuse to cover at least all the other main character riders from the Heisei series, and I hope they do, because when you start lining them up like this, things get pretty epic. And I hope I can at least line up ten Heisei main riders in this scale, because it looks damn cool already. There's only four more to go. And there's already a bonus one, because while we have men here who could walk the heavens and bring it to its knees... This is the one who could punch it in the face and make it say uncle. So come on, Bandai. Finish off the set. This has been Internet Personality Evangelist. 
These have been the Motion Revive Common Riders, and I hope we see more of them, and I hope I see more of you. Stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen, there's always more to come. Which one of you was it? Which one of you was laughing at my partner?